Sometimes you need to pull in data from an external source. Maybe it's an internal website with sales data or even an external source with some data that you want to match up with some other stuff you have in your Excel spreadsheet. So that's what we're going to look at today. And we're going to have kind of fun with it with some public data. So let's dive in and understanding how to pull data in a couple different ways in Excel from external websites. Okay, so there used to be a way in Excel to do something called a web query. It still technically exists, but now you have a more powerful advanced thing called Power Query, which can kind of accomplish the same thing. So first and foremost, in this example, what I want to do is find some data that I want to bring in. And Wikipedia actually has a ton of this data. It's really cool. So if you want to you know, look at populations or sales of a company, even a lot of that data is available on Wikipedia. Here I have the list of the highest grossing films. This is very US centric. So, you know, it's uh, not maybe all films in the world, but all the ones here that are super popular in the US. So here we have essentially a table of data in our web page, and we want to pull that data in. You can see it has the rank uh, of the peak, which is the highest rank that that film had ever achieved, the title of the film, the gross sales worldwide, the year was released, and then some references because it's Wikipedia. So let's say we want to pull this data into Excel. I could just copy and paste that data. I could highlight it and then copy and paste, deal with the formatting and all that. That's fine if it's a one-time thing. Let's say the list of states and abbreviated codes or something for lookups. But if it's a dynamic piece of data, let's say sales data or website analytics data, something like that that you want to pull in and then be able to refresh that later on, you want to do something like a web query. So here in Excel, I have a couple different ways. As I mentioned, you can go to the data tab and then click get data and then from other sources and from web. This is the traditional way to do it. And I believe it's basically how it works now in Power Query, but let's use Power Query because it's more advanced and we can kind of get more done with it. So down below that, I'm going to say launch Power Query Editor. And then in Power Query, not a lot going on. I want to go over to new sources, other sources, and web. Here, I'll give it the URL to the Wikipedia page. And then we have this window here, this navigator to help us find that data. So I can look at the table view. If I click on one of the tables, it'll show me the data that it's pulling in and I can see, oh, that looks like the right one there. I can also go to the web view, which is where I can actually scroll the web page. It shows the whole web page and kind of select it that way. So if you're having a hard time pulling in the data or finding the right table, that would be the way to do it. But here I want to pull in this highest grossing films with the 12 next to it. Hit OK. Now I have the data here as well as the code to import that and all the kind of things that it did. So you'll notice that it actually processes data in a little way, like they're eliminated extra characters and things like that here and there. So that's what's nice about Power Query is it kind of does a lot of that pre-processing for you. And of course, you could add columns and do formulas and functions, all kinds of fun stuff here. But you get the idea. We were able to give it a URL, find the table of data. Now let's close that and load it into our spreadsheet here. And here I have this table of data. Simple as that. Now, if I had just came into the office and there was a website that was pulling it from an intranet or something like that, I could come in, I could refresh this data and it would go re-download that data. That's kind of the power of this is then from here, you can have all kinds of things downstream, you know, pivot tables, charts, analytics, things that you automate by going into PowerPoint, et cetera. But that is the step right there. That is the big one. And now that we have the data in here, we can actually work with the data, right? I can build pivot tables, charts, graphs, whatever it is, all the way downstream. And then tomorrow, if I wanted to, I could come in and let's say the data updated overnight, I can hit refresh and that data comes in and automatically populates everything else. So this is a nice way to sort of automate your work. When I first started out doing this stuff way back when, this was revolutionary, and I'm glad that they basically baked it into where just it's a couple simple menus and all that. So if you wanted to use this data, you can kind of do some fun stuff like, hey, let's find a certain movie, let's add slicers and all that. I think it might be fun to create sort of a chart out of this just to see the difference in the actual you know, visual representation of this data. So I really just want the title and the worldwide gross sales. I'll select those guys, and I'm going to then create a... 2D bar chart and you can kind of see down below what it does, you know, brings that over. I can hide my queries pane. My window's a little small here because, you know, I'm working on this laptop, so it's easier for you guys to see. So with my chart here, I can of course do a lot of different things. I'm actually just going to cut the chart, go over here and paste it in so I can kind of get a better view of it. Use a more realistic example of what you might want to do with the data. 
And then of course, uh, I can go back here and I can sort this data, I can filter it, etc. I'm actually gonna filter, I just wanna see maybe uh, the, the top 10 overall. So I can kind of do that guy right here, top 10, top 10 items. And it did it reverse, that's the opposite of what I wanted. Top 10, custom filter is greater than or equal, is uh, less than or equal to is what I actually want because smaller numbers are better here, is less than or equal to 10. Hit okay, there we go. Top 10 movies of all times, bang over here. Okay. And then of course, because of the way that it does it, I actually want to sort these from largest to smallest, which is reverse on here, but then it does it correctly on the chart. So from there, you can go into the chart and you can update all that. Again, when I open this workbook tomorrow, the next day, I can just refresh it and bang, everything is updated right there, saving you the time and the hassle of copying and pasting, all enabled through Power Query and finding a website with some good data. I hope this helps you. I'm curious how you guys are gonna use this. Let me know in the comments down below. And always don't forget, when you free the data, your mod will follow. I'll see you guys back here next time.